So we have three reports on the agenda today. Today's deck is intended to uh, mine out the salient points and point to some interconnections between the three. Um, the first report, SS 1919 LPS 8619, we're looking for council endorsement today of the CHS five-year review. Um, for those of you that know, the CHS is our um, strategic roadmap on housing, and it's been a, str a strong guiding document for us. Uh, the refresh builds on this and includes achievements to date, aligns with new provincial federal requirements, uh, clarifies language, and continues our strong advocacy efforts for ongoing senior government housing investments in housing. We said loud and clear in the first comprehensive housing strategy, we cannot do it alone. We do need senior and um, federal and provincial le levels of government to be a, a willing partner with us, and we're going to continue that strategic advocacy. Um, this updated uh, comprehensive housing strategy is a requirement of, under the Housing Services Act, and we need to get this to the uh, province on or before January 1st, 2020. Um, and uh, it has been informed with extensive uh, stakeholder and community input. Um, the second report on today's agenda is SS 2219 LPS 10619. Today we're seeking your approval of 28 additional assisted housing units in Oakville. I'll speak uh, later in the slide deck about some of the progress we've made since the initial conceptualization of the CHS five years ago. Uh, but we all, what we wanted to proceed with additional uh, new unit uh, creation, so we're asking for your uh, approval of 28 new assisted housing units in the town of Oakville today. Uh, We've overachieved in terms of uh, creating new housing opportunities, but we know there's more to be done and we will do more. Uh, so we're well on the way of achieving the upset target of creating new, new housing opportunities. And we, we're also gonna be socializing um, a new um, call for proposals early in 2020 when we wanna continue to build even more new housing assisted opportunities. Uh, the final report on today's agenda is LPS 5719. Uh, that's the 2018 State of Housing Report. And we're presenting that for your information. It's an action tied to co the comprehensive housing strategy and you'll find that under strategic direction two of the comprehensive housing strategy update. It provides empirical data, which has been used to inform some of our updated comprehensive housing strategy programs and policies. Um, before we uh, move into the, this, I'd like to start by accentuating that in Halton region, we use a, a housing continuum. And the key message on this one is that we help Halton residents across that housing continuum. Whether it's through emergency shelter or affordability in the private marketplace, the region has a role to play. And we'll conclude this presentation by uh, articulating our approach forward and, the addition, and how we plan on creating additional housing opportunities in the months and years ahead. So this is the housing continuum. Um, this is what we use uh, to, to underpin the, the comprehensive housing strategy. The region's role across this housing continuum varies. So on the left side of the continuum, where you see special needs and assisted housing, the region's role is a government uh, subsidy provider. So whether it's provision of emergency shelter beds or transitional housing working with an, uh, an array of uh, partners in the community or supportive housing, or RGI housing, rent gear to income housing, where we subsidize the monthly rents of some of our vulnerable individuals, families, and seniors, we use government uh, subsidies to do that. Um, and when we, we talk about RGI, there are 26 housing providers in the region, Halton Community Housing Corporation, of course, being our largest, 38 communities, 2,200 units, but we also partner with 25 additional uh, co-ops and nonprofits that provide those housing units for us. Um, on the right side of the continuum, the region's role is significantly different. We use planning levers and financial tools to incentivize affordability in the private marketplace. And, and housing on that side of the continuum is mostly delivered by private sector builders and developers without government subsidy, but we use, we use planning policies and financial levers. Uh, and our, uh, the region's role on that side is more of an influencer. So on the left side of the continuum, we're direct subsidizing uh, vulnerable families, creating affordable housing options. On the right side, we're using policy levers and financial tools to incentivize the private marketplace to create affordable uh, housing units for, in the private marketplace for, for families and seniors and individuals. Uh, local municipalities are key uh, across the continuum, but especially on the right side of the continuum. They have various regulatory tools such as zoning and development application reviews in their purview uh, that can be used to create a supportive environment for the delivery of affordable and assisted housing. And certainly Kurt and his team are actively involved, uh, meeting regularly with the Halton Area Planning Partnership on, uh, and collaborating on that front. So the comprehensive housing strategy, in 2006, uh, Halton Region was actually the first jurisdiction to have a comprehensive housing strategy. Uh, in fact, we were a bit of a leader in this, and so much so that in 2011, the provincial government actually passed legislation through the Housing Services Act mandating that every 
service manager, every housing jurisdiction, or upper tier level of government responsible for housing had to have that 10 year housing and homelessness plan. So some members of council will recall that in 2014, we updated our comprehensive housing strategy from 2016, to 2006, sorry, to, re to respond to that requirement. Um, and in 2014 plan, we've solidified our role as a local system steward for housing. So previously we were very much about transfer payments, delivering subsidies. Now we're responsible for the local planning, delivery and administration of government assisted housing and programs and services, and that's a legislative role. So we've seen a bit of a, um, eroding of constraints out of Queen's Park as it relates to uh, prescriptive legislation. They've come up with more enabling legislation for us, which has given us the ability to, to be innovative. Uh, come up with maiden halt and solutions to address local issues and, 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 and housing needs with, uh, with our own local tools and services. Um, We've been annually reporting on progress made to council every year. So over the last five years, we've, we've been able to share an annual report card on the progress we've made. And we're here today to seek your endorsement of the five-year review, which again is required uh, to be a council endorsed and submitted to the province on or before January 1st of 2020. I did uh, want to sort of accentuate some real-life examples of stakeholder engagement, because that was really integral to uh, not only creating the first plan, but the update to the plan. This slide sort of articulates some of the key partners that we have worked with. And you'll notice we've got housing and homelessness service providers, community support service providers, both local health integration networks in Halton region have been actively involved, the development industry, community safety and well-being leadership group and member organizations, as well as local municipalities. So I wanted to not only talk about that, but maybe give you some examples of how the, the landscape has changed as a result since the first plan to the new plan. So in, in January of this year, we held, we held a housing forum. And for the first time, we had nonprofit, co-ops, uh, support service agents, and private sector in one room. And we said, look, how do we work together to create new assisted housing opportunities? It's been very fragmented in the past. Um, and new connections were made, so much so that one of the projects we're seeking your approval on today, the, the project in Oakville, was actually cultivated at that meeting, where the nonprofit sector and the private sector said, there's a role for us all. Why should a nonprofit apply to build housing if their niche is delivery of support services? And why should a private sector developer get in the nonprofit game? So how do we now partner uh, support services and nonprofits with private sector developers to catalyze the creation of new housing? Uh, so these the partnerships are developing organically. And you know, in the early days, we had to have some difficult discussions with certain agencies around, you, know, you provide mental health addiction support. Why are you looking to build? Why don't you go and partner with a nonprofit agency, a developer, a co-op, or, or a private sector developer and get some units there? So those, those conversations have, have been cultivated and they've rationalized their own, uh, their own um, um, you know, step forward. So much so that you know, we've seen some successes. Like we know that the Hab Habitat project we green-lighted a couple of years ago, they came in with uh, pre-established partnerships. Victoria Park, which council approved late last fall, uh, also came in with established partnerships, so it's a, it's a new build in Milton, which includes six units of supportive housing for, for individuals with uh, acute mental health needs. But not only will they service supports to the individuals in those buildings, they're going to do it to the surrounding periphery. So now that our buildings start to become um, hubs of, of, of support to the broader community, which is a step forward. The other thing that we've, we heard loud and clear from some of those consultations was the need to better integrate ho housing with the health sector. Uh, we, we have an aging population and we need to, we need to respond. Um, so um, some members of council will, will be aware of the uh, pilot project, the uh, PACE project that's taking place at 410 John Street. Um, five years ago, our relationship, I think, with some of the health partners was significantly less than it is today. We realized out of a sense of need, we need to work together. So much so, we formalized um, a working group that's co-chaired by myself from the housing world and my colleague from the, the Lynn, Lynn uh, and we brought together 14 different community agencies and health sector partners that are going to provide joint support services to vulnerable seniors in the building in Burlington. And we're looking at this as a bit of a prototype with the, it, what are the lessons learned and how can we look to expand upon this going forward? And again, that's incrementally new. That wouldn't have happened five years ago. So it just, I want to just articulate some of the progress that's been made. Uh, we've also constituted a, a housing and homeless assistance planning uh, table under the parameters of the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan. And five years ago, we had a number of agencies doing great work, but it was in a fragmented, uncoordinated fashion. Now we've got um, 
uh, common definitions of what homelessness is. We have a table where the numerous partners come together and we talk about the issue, collective impact, how do we work together to um, you know, cr address the homelessness issue in our region. And when we did our last point in time homelessness count, which we brought to council in April this year, um, we had uh, 70 volunteers from 30 community partner agencies come forward to assist with that. So it wasn't the region doing it all, it was uh, the region in concert with multiple partners. Um, and then for you from the, from the local municipal side, um, I know from, from Kurt and his team, they've been actively in, engaged with your local planning departments at the four local municipalities on creation of second units. Uh, you know, the region has policies that it'd like, to, it'd like to operationalize, but some of those tools reside at the local level and they've been working uh, jointly uh, to operationalize those. So, I mean, the, the big message here is that it's achievement in partnership. Uh, we said from the day one of the comprehensive housing strike, we cannot do it alone. I think we've been able to model that, and so much so that we, you'll, you'll notice in the revised plan, um, uh, partnerships are institutionalized, are formalized through some of the actions in the new plan. And again, I'd like to reiterate the point about we cannot do it alone. Um, Senior government funding must, must, be, must continue to flow to Halton Region. Um, and in partnership, we can achieve more than we can acting by ourselves. With respect to the CHS five-year review, um, the five strategic directions of the CHS refresh appear in the circle to the right. Uh, they speak to all elements of the housing continuum and stay very true to the original directions established in 2014. There are two small changes I'd like to accentuate. One, with respect to number three, We've adjusted the taxonomy from community housing instead of assisted housing to align that action with requirements from the province under the community housing renewal strategy. And members of council will uh, recall that we brought a report to council in, in April when that strategy was operationalized. And we've also changed the title to uh, strategic direction five to accentuate the proactive nature of it. We've learned that if somebody ends up in a homeless state, it becomes so much harder to rehouse them than it is if we can proactively uh, intervene and maintain that tenancy. So we've changed the language from uh, regaining housing um, to um, uh, maintaining housing and preventing homelessness. We think that's probably the, the most appropriate thing forward. And we heard that loud and clear from agencies. And I would say that we've got significant support from a number of agencies in the region that want to help us with that. Uh, that you know, when, when we, we find there's a vulnerable client, it isn't just us acting by ourselves. We're often able to reach out to a number of agencies who are willing to jump in and help us, and we, we feel that collective impact is the road forward. Um, the consultation concluded that minor revisions and actions are needed to recognize regional achievements since 2014 and to better align the CHS with recent provincial changes. So the body of the CHS hasn't changed. The, the, the priorities have changed, have, been, uh, have not changed. There's, there's been a few taxonomy changes, but for the most part, the, the CHS in its current form continues. Um, we did hear that we needed uh, to update some of the actions. So members of council will, will recognize that there is 34 actions in the refreshed comprehensive housing strategy, and this is up from 28 in 2014. And the six key areas of focus of the comprehensive stra housing strategy update are on the slide. We're going to continue to protect Halton's existing community housing portfolio. Uh, we're going to create additional government assisted housing through ongoing investments. In, and again, there with regional and, federal, uh, regional and federal provincial funding, all have a role to play. We're going to stimulate and facilitate partnerships between nonprofits, agencies, and private sector developers. We're going to strengthen alignment between the housing and health social service sectors. We're going to co collaborate with local municipalities, and we're going to increase and enhance support service and homelessness prevention programs in partnership with housing providers, agencies, and federal and provincial ministries. So I wanted to uh, remind council we had a target of creating up to 900 new assisted housing opportunities over the 10-year life of the comprehensive housing strategy. And important to note here is the upset limit of 900 is, is conditioned on ongoing funding from senior levels of government. Um, so you'll notice that in the revised comprehensive housing strategy, strategic advocacy for systems improvement and stable long-term funding from senior levels of government is continued from the original CHS and forms action 3A in the updated strategy. So we're going to continue to petition senior levels of government for uh, ongoing funding and support on, on assisted and affordable housing. Um, Time-sensitive senior government funding for housing over the last few years has been diminished. And we brought a report to council in July where we talked about that. Uh, between 2016 and 2019, $33 million was made available between federal and provincial governments combined. Uh, in um, This year, we've, we learned that we've got $10.2 between 2019 and 2022, so it's a third of what we've had. 
But what's concerning is that, that, that those funds that are available now are, have, need to be multi-purposed to create new assisted housing opportunities, to preserve existing stock, and to assist vulnerable Halton residents with rental subsidies. And under the old uh, um, program in, in 2016 and 2019, we had unique streams of funding where we could do, uh, achieve multiple objectives. So uh, there has been a significant reduction. Uh, but as I said, strategic advocacy, senior levels of government will continue, and we'll continue to uh, uh, you know, advocate for our fair share of any new funding that comes down the pipe. So between 2014 and 2018, we've created 764 new housing opportunities. And um, we're well on track to achieving a housing uh, opportunities target of 900. Uh, but again, ongoing funding with senior levels of government remains essential to achieve that. Um, so we're going to use provincial funding, the 10.2 million that's available over the next three years to create new housing opportunities. And in fact, we're actually using some of that today in, for the assisted housing project we're rec recommending for funding. The uh, region also invests $7.8 million annually to support uh, implementation of the community housing uh, strategy. So we'll use that in concert with federal and provincial dollars to achieve even more. Um, and going forward, it's not business as usual. So we've heard from the community that often nonprofits and co-ops uh, are not uh, sometimes marginalized from the process. They want to be able to, uh, they don't have the same uh, performer and ability to leverage private financing like some of the private sector developers do. So. Going forward, any private sector developer that wants to come forward to receive uh, assisted housing funding now needs to come uh, forward with a partnership with a non-profit co-op or agency to create supportive housing units or, or reduced rents for uh, uh, vulnerable populations. And we've also made available 30% of the total cost can now be made available for non-residential use so that we can bring in life enrichment support services, health services into the buildings to assist vulnerable uh, populations with their, their health and, and social service needs. Uh, and we think that this model will allow for a mix of market, assistance, and supportive housing in one community, which gets us back to our CHS objective of building socially and economically diverse communities. In, inherent to this too is, I think, uh, Halton Regions' role as a leader. We have been seen as a leader in housing. Uh, members of council may recall that we were the first Ontario jurisdiction to operationalize a Halton in situ program, which is the uh, portable housing benefit. Uh, what that's allowed us to do is assist over 300 vulnerable seniors, families, and individuals with receiving rent where they currently reside. Um, a real life example, I can tell you our first client to receive this was a vulnerable senior who needed $250 a month to stay where she lived. And she basically said, why should I wait on a list for uh, several years to access support. Can you not just p provide support where I live? So we, came, we were able to operationalize that and she's living happily where she is now, close to her family support, close to her, her medical uh, needs. <clears throat> uh, we also, we've also been able to use that fund to rapidly assist um, victims of domestic violence. They often need to flee uh, abusive situations, so by giving them portable housing subsidies it enables them to move away from harm's way and still receive the subsidy they need to get on an even footing. <clears throat> This program was very successful, so much so we were asked by the province to help them inform the design features of a provincial portable housing benefit. So there now is a provincial portable housing framework based on our model, and we're in discussions with the federal government on design features of a national housing benefit. Uh, well, and members of council will obviously be kept updated on that. So you can see from the previous chart, we've made significant progress, but we know there's more still to be done. So in May of 2019, we issued a, a request for applications. Uh, five applications were received and four expressions of interest. Some could potentially be eligible for funding but could not meet the rigorous provincial timelines. And those timelines are by December 31st, the proponent must be able to enter into an agreement with us and construction must start by April. Um, so the, the RFA application process was all, will also be refined going forward. We're gonna be doing a, a regionally funded procurement in, in early in the new year. And some of those inhibitors from the provincial federal uh, requirements will not, be, uh, will, not be, uh, will not be in play here. So we feel this will be, allow us to create additional housing opportunities. So we're seeking your approval today of 28 additional assisted housing units at 1260 Marlborough Court in Oakville. 22 units will house uh, vulnerable seniors from the Halton Access to Community Housing waitlist. The residual six units will provide supportive housing for Halton residents with acute mental health needs in partnership with Support and Housing Halton. The residual, the total building will have 70 units, the residual units will be market units. So we're gonna try and achieve what we said in the comprehensive housing strategy. Um, we're gonna achieve um, socially and economically diverse communities. Some market, some assisted, some supportive, all in one building. Um, both uh, 1260 Marlborough and Support and Housing Halton have proven to be very good partners of ours. 
uh, they, they, uh, support and housing. Halton holds a number of transitional housing uh, um, agreements with us, and, and they've been helping vulnerable uh, individuals in our community with mental health for many years. And uh, 1260 Marlborough has been creating uh, housing options for vulnerable seniors. So that we have over 100 rent supplement with them now and currently growing and so much so that they, they see a need so they're coming to us now saying how can we help how can we make units available to you which I think is a step forward um, the, the basic requirement from the province is that units be available at 80% average market rent for 20 years we've been able to negotiate 30 years of average market rent so 80% so we get greater affordability uh, and we're also going to use Halton Rental Assistance Program rent supplements to deepen the rents for those folks that need it. Some will be able to afford 80% market rent. Those that need it will receive a subsidy from the region for the full 30-year term so they, they, can, uh, they can live there. So in terms of funding, we're going to be using $3 million in Ontario Priorities Housing Initiative and $1.2 1, um, million IAH, Investment in Affordable Housing Extension Funding, both provincial funds, total sum of $4.2 million that needs to be committed on or before December 15th. Um, so if approved, this will fully commit available provincial funding this year, uh, avoiding any uh, clawback to us. And as I said, moving forward, uh, stay tuned for more in uh, early 2020 and beyond. We're going to be doing the procurement and we look forward to coming back to Council with even more projects for your approval.